Hello everyone, thank you for joining with me. Today we'll learn about continuous learning with IBM Watson Machine Learning and DB2 Warehouse on Cloud. In this code pattern, we will be solving a problem for the city of Chicago using the Watson Studio Model Builder to model building code violations. We'll predict which buildings are most likely to fail building inspections in order to save time and resources for city inspectors. Continuous learning is a process whereby your machine learning models automatically improve over time as your training data evolves and grows, thus closing the feedback loop between training data and deployed models. Today, we will use IBM Watson Machine Learning, Apache Spark, and Watson Studio to quickly build and prototype models to monitor deployments and to learn over time as more data becomes available. Performance monitoring and continuous learning enables machine learning models to retrain on new data supplied by the user or other data sources. Then all of your applications and analysis tools, which depends on the model, are automatically updated as Watson Studio handles selecting and deploying the best model. As you can see, the flow diagram shows you how all the components are communicating together. Let's now see how we can build continuous learning model using IBM Cloud. If you don't have an IBM Cloud account, create one by going to URL console.bluemix.net. First, you'll need to create an object storage service if you don't already have one. From the catalog, search for object storage and select object storage service. Choose the light plan and click create. Now next, we'll be creating Watson Studio. From the catalog again, search for keyword Watson Studio and create a Watson Studio service. Choose the light plan. You can click get started to go to IBM Watson Studio platform. Let's create a new project. Click new project, choose complete and fill out the details and click create. From the catalog in IBM Cloud, search for keyword Spark and choose Apache Spark service. Choose the light plan and click create. From the catalog again, search for keyword machine learning. Choose IBM machine learning and choose the standard plan since we'll be using more than 5,000 records and click create. Once the services are created, we need to add the services to our Watson Studio project. Go to settings, click add service dropdown list, select Spark, add the existing Spark service that you have just created to your project and click select. We need to do the same thing for Watson Machine Learning. Go to Add Service drop-down, select Watson, and then select Machine Learning, click Add. Select the existing Watson Machine Learning service and click Select. From the IBM Cloud Catalog, source for DB2 Warehouse on Cloud and create one using the Entry Plan. Once the service is created, create new credentials by selecting service credentials option in the left navigation panel. Make sure to save the credentials for upcoming steps. Let's create DB2 Warehouse connection to your Watson Studio project. Click Add to Project and choose Connection. Select DB2 Warehouse on Cloud. Fill out the details based on credentials you saved earlier and click Create. Let's now create tables in our database to store the source data and feedback data. Open IBM data Database Warehouse on Cloud by going to DB2 Warehouse Service Space. Open up the hamburger menu and select Run SQL. This will open up an editor. From the clone project directory, copy the SQL statement from violations.sql file and execute the statement by clicking Run All from Run drop-down list. 
Similarly, let's create the feedback table. Copy the SQL statements from violations underscore feedback dot SQL file and execute the statement. The statement also has a trigger to store current underscore timestamp in underscore training column. Note that underscore training column is all lowercase. Let's now load the initial source data into the violations table. Click load, then from your clone project directory, select the CSV file and click next. Click next on the screen again. Select the correct schema, select violations table and click next. You can choose to append the new data or override the existing data. Click next on the screen again and click begin upload to upload the data. It has started uploading. Once the uploading is done, 85,000 records will be uploaded to the violations table. Let's go to add to project again. Choose connected asset to add data asset from the DB2 warehouse on cloud database. Give a name and click select source. Select the right schema and choose violations table and click select. Then Then click create to create the data asset. Now you can see the violations asset being added to your Watson Studio project. From the assets tab of your Watson Studio project, select new Watson machine learning model, provide a name, choose the machine learning and Apache Spark instance that you have added to your project, choose model builder or model type, Choose manual so that you can prepare your own data and click create. Select the data asset that you have added earlier. Now it has started initializing the kernel and once the kernel is initialized, it will start loading the data. Once the data is loaded, choose inspection status as the column to predict for new set of data and all for feature columns. We will be using binary classification Add estimators by clicking the add estimates link and in our case we'll be using logistic regression and decision tree classifier you can select others as well based on what kind of estimator algorithm you want to choose once the training and evaluation is done you can choose the one that performed the best and click save feedback data and new evaluations to the continuously learning model once the Watson machine learning model is saved select the evaluation tab first we need to configure the performance monitoring Add this flux service from the drop-down list, choose area on the PR performance metric of the model and select threshold as 80%. This means if performance is under 80%, the model needs to be retrained using the source data and new feedback data and the new learning will be saved. Add the connection by selecting the feedback data reference data and select DV2 connection that you previously created and select the feedback table. Use 500 as record count and click save. Once that's done, now you can add feedback data using the plus feedback data link. Once the feedback data is loaded, select the new evaluation to evaluate the uploaded feedback data. You can unzip the provided data Chicago building inspection data by month 2017 that you can find in the cloned project and use that monthly inspection data as a feedback data. When the evaluation is completed, we can see where the threshold value lies for this new feedback data. The evaluation goes through series of stages and 
based on the performance of the feedback data, the model is retrained and redeployed. If the evaluated value is below threshold value, the data is then retrained and redeployed. And if the performance is above the threshold, the new model is automatically deployed. In our case, the performance has exceeded the threshold value and hence it has redeployed the new version of the model. You can also see the list of evaluations that have been completed and see how the model has been continuously learning. You can upload new feedback data repeatedly from the provided data so that model continuously learns. Let's now deploy the model to expose it through an API. Select the deployments tab. Click add deployment to add a new deployment. Provide a name. Choose a web service as a deployment type and click create. Now the model is exposed through an API. If you select, you can see the details of the API. If you select the implementation tab, you can see different examples on how to use the newly created API. There are example code for different languages to access this particular API. You can access and test the API programmatically or use crawl commands. You can also go to the test tab and provide a new set of data to evaluate the inspection status. Let's now test this API and predict inspection status for this particular data. And click predict. The result of the evaluation is shown in a horizontal graph located on the right side of the base. In case of our data, the model has predicted to pass the inspection as you can see from the graph. You can also see the JSON output of the same prediction. In this case, you can use the API to get the JSON output and use the output in your application.